Fifty years ago, my father left old Aaron Shore. He landed here, shillelagh in hand, and didn't a penny more. Got a job, and he got a wife, and then a family. And then he died and left his old shillelagh stick to me. Sure, it's the same old shillelagh my father brought to my land. The divil a man was prouder than he when he walked with it in his head. He'd lead the band on Paddy's day and twirl it round his mitt. And divil a bit, we'd laugh at it, your dad'd have a fit. And with the same old shillelagh my father could lick a dozen men. As fast as they'd get up, aha, he'd knock them down again. And many's the time he used it on me to make me understand. The same old shillelagh my father brought to my land. like a breath from the Emerald Isle. Well, thank you, lassie. Thank Uncle you. Sean will love it. I hope so, honey. They sure want to make an impression on the old guy. You know what? I think I'll take him to the club one night and maybe do one of those old Irish routines I used to do at the 5100 Club. Oh, he'll love that. You think so? Mm-hmm. I don't know, though, on second thought, though. He's... I mean, meeting him for the first time, I wouldn't want to offend him. You think he'd mind me poking fun at the Irish oh, like that? Oh, don't be silly, Danny. He has a great sense of humor. And nobody likes an Irish story better than an Irishman. Yeah. Besides, it might ease the shock a bit. Oh. <laughs> what shock? Well. Well, uh, what? Well, I, I, I told him you were Irish. <laughs> You what? Before we were married, I, I wrote and told him that you were born in County Cork and that you had blue eyes and a turned-up nose. <laughs> How could you tell him I've got a turned-up nose? Well, darling, you have when you stand in your head. <laughs> Very funny. What do you want to go and write and tell him I'm Irish for? Well, after all, darling, I didn't want him to know that I'd married a foreigner. <laughs> Me, a foreigner? For your information, I was born in Toledo, Ohio, which isn't exactly the capital of Outer Mongolia. I know, darling, but to Uncle Sean, anybody who isn't Irish is a foreigner. Isn't that too bad? Boy, this kills me. First, I gotta make good with your father, then I gotta make good with your uncle. Well, your Uncle Tanu's put me through the mill. Said I was too skinny. You know, we, we ought to hire a hall, invite all of our relatives, charm them all at one time, and make our marriage official. <laughs> yeah. We finished lunch. Can we have some money for the movies? I suppose so. What's playing? Well, the regular Saturday kids matinee. Yeah, eight cartoons, three pictures, and chapter six of The Monster from the Moon. <laughs> Oh, they're also having a preview showing if I was a teenage Frankenstein. <laughs> Movies are not only better than ever, they're longer than ever. Here, drop us a postcard from time to time. Okay. <laughs> oh, wait a minute, kids. You can't go now. I forgot Danny. Uncle what? Sean will be here any minute. Oh, that's right. Well, he's not my uncle. Why do I have to stay home? Yeah, what kind of talk is that? You got the wrong idea about this whole thing. What do you mean he's not your uncle? He's Kathy's uncle. He's your uncle. He's my uncle, too. Her relatives are our relatives, Russ. Our relatives are her relatives, and each other's relatives are relatives. You understand? Well, it's sort of complicated. Could I think about it? Yeah, think about it. I'll think about it at the movies. No! <laughs> but I do my best thinking at the movies. You will stay here and meet your new uncle. Give me my money. Oh, no, Danny, that, that must be him. Oh, oh Cassie! Cassie! Yeah, let me get a good look at you now. Ah, uh, sure. And you're the spitting image of your mother, bless her soul. I can shout, I can shout. Oh, little Linda. <laughs> what a pretty little Colleen you're sprouting into. <laughs> Rusty, take Uncle Sean's bag here. Uh, Uncle Sean, I want you to know Danny. How do you do, sir? How's everything in Boston? How do you do, lad? Fine, yes, fine. And now, Kathleen, where's that fine, upstanding Irish broth of a husband of yours, huh? Uncle Sean, this is my husband, Danny. Excuse me. 
Kathleen, my girl, this may come as a shock to you, but you've been lied to. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but whatever it is, it is definitely not Irish. <laughs> don't hold that against me, Mr. Hare. We can't all be Irish. No, we can't, because there's just so many of us as deserves it. Yes, sir. <laughs> Put your bags in Terry's room next to the bathroom in case you want to scrape those whiskers off. <laughs> um, and what is this? Oh, uh, Uncle Sean, this is Rusty, Danny's son. Well, he's not a bad-looking boy, considering the source. <laughs> Why, you uh, old... Danny! Good morning, sir. What's good about I don't know. <laughs> Go on away and leave me alone. That's right. Crawl off and leave me with this mess. <laughs> it can't be happening. Merciful providence wouldn't let it happen to a kindly God-fearing man like myself. Wouldn't let what happen? Have you no eyes in your head, man? If I move me bishop to the king's four, it's checkmate in two moves. So, uh, so don't move it. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to move it. It's the only move that Paddy McCormick has left me. Who's Paddy McCormick? The fella I'm playing this game with. <laughs> <laughs> don't look now, but the fella you're playing with is gone. <laughs> Is there no end to me troubled? Not only is my favorite niece marry a foreigner with his nose turned the wrong way, <laughs> but a foreigner who's a driveling idiot into the bargain. <laughs> Paddy McCormick's in Dublin. You mean you're playing a game of chess with a man who's in Ireland? I am that. Boy, he must have awful long arms. <laughs> well, long arms, you know. <laughs> he's in Ireland, he's got a re It's a joke. <laughs> We're playing the game by mail, you thick skull blatherskite. I write him my move, he writes me his move, and it goes back and forth like that. His last move came in this morning's mail. Mm. How long have you been playing this game? Oh, I'd say uh, eight and a half years. <laughs> <laughs> You've been playing chess eight and a half years? Mm. One game? They've got some very slow boats between here and Ireland. <laughs> say it ain't true. Somebody say it ain't true. Okay, it ain't true. <laughs> but it is. Two moves and I'm finished. Danny, you've got to do something. You're my relative. Don't just stand there. Do something. Well, what are you getting all excited about? It's only a game of chess. Only a game of chess? Why, you... Beller and Banshee, and to think in a moment of weakness I called you a relative. Mr. <laughs> <laughs> what's to get excited about? All right, so I know it's tough to lose a game you've been playing for eight and a half years. It ain't the eight and a half years. It's just that, well, it... What is it? Sit down, son. Danny, I'm going to tell you something I've told no living man. I'm a failure. Oh, come on. No, 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 I'm a failure. All my life, that black-hearted, no good, Paddy McCormick, he... Well, you take when we were little sprouts together in Dublin, we'd go fishing, he'd catch maybe 15 or 20 fine trout. Me? Nary a nibble I'd get for me pains. Anya takes school. Paddy'd get all hundreds. Me? All goose eggs. <laughs> Anya take the soccer team. He was the captain. I was the water boy. And in Ireland, water's not too popular, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so he played better soccer than he caught more fish, and he got better grades. So oh, no. what? Wait, wait, wait. You haven't heard the worst yet. 
There was Peggy. Peggy? I, Peggy, the prettiest Colleen in all the county. Kind of soft. Soft with laughing blue eyes and a sweet smile that would warm a man's heart. I left Ireland the day Paddy McCormick married her. Don't you see, he beat me out of Peggy like he beat me at everything else. But I swore on the graves of my dead ancestors that I wouldn't rest until I'd found something that I could beat Paddy McCormick at. Then I found. Yes, sir. I found it. Yes. Discovered I had the knack for it. So I studied the game, read all the books, and then I wrote Paddy and challenged him to a game. Well, that was eight and a half years ago. Oh, look at that sorry sight. Eight and a half years I've been waiting to beat Paddy McCormick at something, and now, in two moves, he's going to beat me at this two. Mm. <sighs> he moved the bishop here, and he takes it with his rook. You can't move the king. Check No, nope. The game is over. Oh, Danny, if there was just some way I didn't have to make that bishop move. <sighs> I'm afraid you're dead, Uncle Sean. I am indeed dead. Dead. Hey, that's it, I got it. What, what, what's it, what, what? You're dead. If you're dead, you can't make the move. If you can't make the move, you don't lose. Nobody wins the game. <laughs> but I'm very definitely not dead, and I intend to stay not dead for some time, I hope. <laughs> I mean, uh, suppose I were to cable Paddy McCormick. I regret that the chess game cannot continue because Sean O'Hara has passed on to his maker. He couldn't question that, could he? The saints preserve it. It's a divine idea, me bucko. <laughs> oh, Danny, it's proud I am to welcome you into the family. <laughs> You're a true son of Aaron. Sweetheart. What do you mean, morning? It's after one o'clock. You certainly had a good night's sleep. Honey, this is the quietest Saturday morning I can remember in the history of this house. That's because Uncle Sean took the kids to the park. He wasn't oh. going to have anybody around the house disturbing the sleep of his favorite nephew. Did he say that? Yeah, how about that? Uh. Boy, the weak spot you found certainly must have been a pip. What was it? Ah, sorry, my little Khalid. I can't tell you that. <laughs> it's a deep, dark secret between two black-hearted Irishmen, Sean O'Hara and Dan McWilliams. <laughs> oh, I almost forgot. A cablegram came for you this morning. Cable? Mm-hmm. Where's it from? Oh, no. Oh, no. Danny, what's the matter? Oh, holy Toledo. Danny, oh, tell me, no. what's, what is it? What's the matter? What's the matter? Patty McCormick's coming all the way from Ireland to attend Sean's funeral. <laughs> ah! <laughs> it can't be. It's it there. can't be. Yeah, it is, though. There it is in black and white. There's no white. It's all black. <laughs> Does Kathy know about my funeral? It must have come as quite a shock to her, not even knowing I had passed on. Ah, <laughs> oh, my darling nephew, what am I going to do? Now Patty will know me, not only for a loser, but a cheat as well. I'm afraid you're in a big Irish stew. <laughs> and who pushed me into the Irish stew? <laughs> you did. This was all your idea. You and your Lebanese blarney. <laughs> no such thing as Lebanese blarney. Well, it was blarney, and it certainly wasn't Irish. <laughs> oh, it's, it's me own fault for having a niece who'd soil our good name. 
By marrying a scheming foreigner. <laughs> I'm a scheming foreigner, huh? And who was it kissed my hands for the other day? Quist, Danny Williams, I'm putting the curse of the O'Hara's on you. You'll never be friend or kin to me. <laughs> what am I going to do? How could I face that grinning devil, Paddy McCormick? <laughs> You'll be coming any minute. Well, it's your own fault for getting yourself into such a silly, childish mess. My fault? He was the one who got me into it with his sneaky oriental mind. <laughs> least he could do is think of something equally sneaky to get me out of it. What are you making such a big McGill out of the thing? Why don't you just come out and tell him the truth? Tell him the truth and admit I'm a failure, is that it? Yeah. Oh, wait. I'll make it the truth. I'll do away with myself. Oh, so, Sean, you wouldn't. How much Irish whiskey do you have in the house? What? It's the only fitting way for an O'Hara to go. Oh, well, you can't do that. Certainly not. It'd take too long. <laughs> True. And besides, if I failed in my attempt, the hangover would kill me. <laughs> oh. And Paddy McConrick won't even leave me alone to enjoy my own funeral. <laughs> And speaking of the devil, <laughs> that's the sound of doom. <laughs> oh, Danny, Danny, you're my only hope now. Do something, think of something, what, please. What can I think of? I'm begging you, as a fellow Irishman. <laughs> you're a fellow Irishman now? I'm inviting you to rejoin us. <laughs> please, Danny, think of something. For your old uncle, Sean O'Hara, you can do it. There's nobody can beat the fiendish Orientals for fine Irish ingenuity. <laughs> Just a moment, Danny Williams. Yes. I'm Paddy McCormick. Oh, oh, come in. Come in. Let me take your hat and coat. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I, I'm Danny Williams, and uh, this is my wife, Kathy, the niece of the dearly beloved departed uncle. <laughs> How do you do, ma'am? How do you do? It's sorry I am to be intruding at a time like this on the bereaved family. So if you could tell me when and where the wake is to be held. <laughs> <laughs> the wake? Wake, yes. Oh, the wake. Uh, matter of fact, uh, there's not going to be any wake. No wake? No, no wake. Why not? <laughs> no body. No body? What did he do with it? He, he didn't do anything with it. Uh, well, he passed on, though, didn't he? How come then there's no body? He had one when he left Dublin. <laughs> well, you see, uh, sir, the... Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> Wonderful question. Uh, well, now, the reason there's no body is that... Uh, he drowned. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's it, he drowned. Oh. Yeah, he fell off the, the Staten Island Ferry. I remember he, he was out getting some fresh salt sea air to clear his head for the big chess game, and... He went down and, and never, never came up. Oh, no. Yeah. Uh, I, it's a shame I know how you must feel coming all the way from Ireland to pay your last respects and say a eulogy to your old friend. Pay me last respects? Say a eulogy? I came here to look upon the remains of that black-hearted devil and blast the day I met him. Now, really, Mr. McCormick. Well, no offense to you, ma'am, but... A black-hearted devil he was. <laughs> oh. Even dead, he gets the better of me. He gets the better of you? Me whole life. Oh, that's not the way I heard it. <laughs> Why, one time he told me that when you were kids out fishing, you caught a mess of fish. He never could catch one. 
And whose mother made who eat them? And I hate fish. <laughs> yeah, but, but you were the hero on the soccer team. What about that, the soccer team? Yeah, and who got kicked so much they got water in the knee and suffers excruciating agony every time it rains? <laughs> Oh, but in school, you were brilliant. You got better marks than he did. That's another thing. The dirty, sneaking blackguard. I got such good grades that it made people expect a great deal of Patty McCormick. And all my life, I've disappointed him. But Sean O'Hara, anything that dumb ox did was an improvement. <laughs> but Peggy, Peggy, you got Peggy with the laughing blue eyes, sweet, soft. Soft, is it? 276 pounds of softness. <laughs> and her pushing me around with every pound of it. <laughs> oh, all me life I've been waiting. Waiting for the one time to get the better of him. Once, just once is all I wanted. Two moves. Two tiny little moves, and I had him. So what does he do? He does the sneakiness thing he ever did in his whole life. He dies. <laughs> he dies and takes his body with him. <laughs> now I'll never have a chance to beat him at anything. By all that's holy if it isn't himself, Paddy McCormick. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Paddy, me buckle. Sure, no hair. It's me, Sean O'Hara, body and all. But, but you're dead. Oh, I've come back. It's a miracle, that's what it is, a miracle. A miracle has been after happening just so that I might finish a very important chess game. But, but he said you drowned. Well, you heard what I said, it was a miracle. You believe in miracles, don't you, man? A miracle? Aye. What kind of a double cross and underhanded game is your daughter? Twist! Don't you be raising your voice to my darling nephew. <laughs> as fine an Irishman as ever drew breath. <laughs> Irish? Aye. <laughs> Glory be, another miracle. <laughs> And there. That's right. Okay? All right, Uncle Sean, make your move. All right. The bishop to the king's for. There you are, Paddy McCormick. Your great moment is at hand. Make your move. Eight and a half years I've been waiting for this. <laughs> I, uh... I can't do it. What? I can't do it. Why not? No more have I the need. All our lives, you always thought I got the best of you. And me always thinking you got the best of me. But now that the, I found out the truth, well, there's, there's no more need for me to beat you at anything, Sean O'Hara. Ah, uh, there's no more need to me to beat you at anything, <laughs> Paddy McCormick. And I'd say it's a great day for the Irish. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me the truth, man. Peggy, there's really 276 pounds of her now? There was when I left. <laughs> there may be more of her by the time I get back. <laughs> Hi. This is a picture of St. Jude Hospital, Memphis, Tennessee. It is supported by an organization known as ALSAC, A-L-S-A-C. And I am proud to be president of that organization. ALSAC means aiding leukemia-stricken American children. And members of my organization and I have pledged ourselves to do everything we possibly can to help fight this dreaded killer of children, leukemia. Thank you. 